guys, Sadie here and welcome back to my channel. So today I decided to share with you some study tips. Usually vlogging is about, you know, going to different places, stuff like this. But I decided to sit down and share with you what I am usually doing because actually studying is part of my daily life and routines. I have to incorporate it somehow with all the things that I am doing. And also since this is my last year at university, I am graduating, I have a lot of lot of stuff to prepare, also like bigger exams are coming, so this is why I started getting prepared for that earlier, so it will be easier for me when the date is coming. Here is the thing about the exams is that you sign up for a date, they are different dates and you decide in which one. I think for now I might go for one of the last ones just to be prepared, but I might change my decision. But these are the things that I usually do, of course different people, different habits, you might have other tips to share with the world which is also great so you can comment down below if i have missed anything or you have something to add to all the things that i'm gonna show it to you so right now let's get into the routine so one of the first thing and the most obvious that everybody's doing is to read your lesson in my case it's a lecture the good thing is that we have presentations for absolutely everything even external materials like Word documents, they even give us like online books as PDFs so we can read more if someone is interested by the certain topic that we are. So here is why I do it person. First, to see if I have paid attention to class because if you start reading, you will remember, oh, she mentioned this or he, depending if your, your teacher is male or female. And second, to see what percentage of like the lecture you understood while you were in class of course like this is like something additional and it's only like the first step to see what the lesson was about if you can remember anything that you did but this is not like you read it once and you stop no actually you have to read it a few times to memorize it maybe if there are different tasks you should complete it answer the questions if for example you have math you can write down the problems that were after every lesson so you can see if you have enough practice with them or not. So it's just reading initially is very important. Now I'm going to explain something which will help you better understand like what I will talk about in the rest of the video. So we have this big exam which is at the end of the fourth year aka when you are graduating. So it contains all the subjects that you had from the first to the fourth year. They are two careers which are very, very similar. I'm studying informatics, but there are students who took information technology. During the first and the second year, our subjects are the same. So we have the same teacher, the same groups, the same subjects, everything is the same. And we have the same amount of credits. But from the third year, subjects are getting distinct. And also with that came a question which I might end up asking someone else because I'm just curious to know. So, for example, you have a maximum amount of classes which you need to take and they are 18 credits, all of them. So, for example, they give you subjects with total amount of 24 credits, but you need only 18. You can sign up for more classes. And my question is, is this big exam personalized? Because I haven't signed up for every single class that exists and that the university offers me because I can't. You have... A maximum amount of credits which you need and you can sign up for more even if you try to pay they might take your money they won't but you just can sign up more than 18 credits and this is the amount of classes so this is why i wonder if you would personalize because they can give me questions of a subject which i never had even if i find a teacher i still don't have any presentation or anything to read from also, one thing is your subject to be explained by a teacher and also to learn a whole new subject by yourself. Even if I find uh, materials like from students who actually took this class, it's still not the same. So I might ask someone if this is a possibility, like if it's personalized, that would be great because as I already said, I didn't took every single class and i just think that it won't be fair to give you something that you never studied and them to expect you to learn it somehow by yourself but this is the biggest exam like it's only at the end of the fourth year because you're graduating will you study more or not this is your decision you can jump straight to work or to sign up for a year and a half if you want to be a master or anything like to have an even higher degree it's your choice but this is why I started preparing for this exam now. I might sign up for one of the latest dates 
just so I can have more time to prepare because also now soon I'll start having my second test of the subject. The end of the semester is coming and I have to focus on other stuff. But this is the biggest exam for which everybody is preparing before graduating. As I said, I'm studying informatics and this is what my lectures used to look like. These are from my first year. I started from the beginning. So as you can see, we have text, we have a lot of code. This is like examples, which we use later to solve our problems. This one is for multiply matrices. Yes, everything is on my native language, of course, but this doesn't mean that if it's in English, we won't understand it. We have a lot of examples, a lot of theorems. And at the end, we do have homework. This is our homework. We have here like 10 problems which we need to solve. It's not obligational, but we need to solve them mostly because this is an exercise and they do have grades. It's not enough only to read your lectures. Also, it's important to take good notes. It's not only about writing something, then throw it away, never look at it again. Of course, you have to learn what you have written. But a study says, and also everybody notices that if you write down, no matter if it's on a tablet, aka digital notes, or if you have it on paper, you memorize better what you have learned because after all, you are going through it not only by reading, but also by writing it. I don't have red pens here or any other color pens, so my notes are very raw here. This is from yesterday. Yes, I do not have the best handwriting, but I used to use this book for other subjects as well, because back in the day when I was like ninth grade, I haven't had history, biology, chemistry, physics, and geography from seventh grade, so I decided to write down some notes from seventh grade. Yeah, imagine this notes, learning and studying all these subjects for one year and the teacher expects you to remember what you studied from seventh grade. But anyways, this is what I use this notebook for and this is how I used to take my notes. So the title, I decided to mark it in green. I can just do it today, just write the title in green or underlined or something. Every single topic is in red and just the description is in blue. I don't write in black pens, but some people do. It's literally their preferences. And if you have digital notes, literally the writing is the same. Goes when I write the notes on my iPad. So yes, I do use my iPad for taking notes. So here is how it goes. In red, I just have marked all my theorems. Like basically this is something important. You have to learn it. And the theorem itself, like, for example, here, this is in green. I decided to mark it in green because this will attract my attention that, okay, it's a theorem, but this is what the theorem actually is about. And of course, we have lemmas, so I decided then to mark them in this light blue. It's really a plane of colors. You can use any color that you want, and everything else here is in black. Yes, I do write in black. Again, not the best handwriting, but I still have, like some decent hair, at least I can read it. After all, these notes are for me and not making them for someone else. Here, for example, I have more. This is another theorem and I just marked everything in green. These are just the three colors that are used. Green, red, and blue. You can use anything you want, of course, black for writing, but it's just, it doesn't matter how you take your digital notes. For example, here I have more. Like, it just depends on, will they be useful for you, not for anybody else, because after all, you are studying, but if you have good and effective notes other people might want them as well so take if you're not helping yourself you might end up helping someone else sometimes reading your lectures and writing effective notes might not be enough for you this is why i am recording every single lecture that i have yes believe it or not it's also helping for the students who can't go to the lectures and they're watching them after work for example because yes most of the students are working and then just can go to the lectures even if they are online because they might have a meeting with their team at that time. So it's very useful. I just record every single lecture and then upload it to different drives and websites and I share the link and they can watch it in peace. Also, it's good for another reason. That is because if you don't understand something, you can replay this lecture as many times as you want until you understand it. And if you still don't understand it after playing it 10,000 steps, you can, of course, email the teacher and they will answer you back. But for me, this is an effective way because I don't need to bug the teacher with every single thing that I didn't understand. I can just replay the lecture and hear their explanation again and again and again and as much times as I want. So yes, this takes a lot of memory on my laptop, I have to notice this, 
but it's also very effective and as i said also i've shared it with everyone who didn't watch them or for someone who just wants to rewatch them again they're helpful before a test because if even if you have all the notes even if you have read every single materials that are online in your course page sometimes watching a video later won't harm you at all of course i have recorded them on normal speed but i speed them up a little bit mostly to save time because each lecture is hour and a half and if i watch like five lectures before a test that will give me like six seven hours well i can watch it for half of the time it also depends on the speed of the teacher because i have one math teacher he talks very very slowly and if i put in double the speed it still sounds normal while they are teachers who talk like a little bit faster and i can put them on more than 1.5 speed but this really depends on like what software you use and all this stuff so let me show you all the video lectures that i have so as you can see i have a folder called video lectures and when I open it here are the current subjects that I have and that need to be recorded. I have another one which is in person. Technically, I can record it. They don't have online version. But each one holds all the lectures which I had up to now. Yes, they are trims because I'm trimming like a little bit just to save some space. No matter that, lately it started gaining me some space. But here I have cloud. Yes, here I don't have that many lectures because we... We missed a couple of classes due to the teacher was missing. He couldn't appear anyways. Here also don't have that much because we had tests. And when we have tests, of course, we do not have lectures. Here I have even more. So really depends. So let me actually play you one to, so you can see exactly what it is. So for example, this is number two. This is the teacher. This is what we do. Here we have the room, the chats and basically everything that you might need for this lecture. I will minimize it a little bit. And this is what it looks like. It's very, very simple process. Speaking of video lectures, you should always search on the internet for more. Maybe I should say on YouTube because there are tons of tutorials and explanation materials that you can find on there. Literally, when I was studying probability in first grade, I was just looking someone to explain this to me, what it is with simple examples. And I found this YouTube channel which explain how is the probability to get head and tails flipping a coin every time and it was just so simple to understand that shout out to these people also i can be searching for many coding tutorials if i have a problem i was creating a website for one project and i needed to do a timer and i'm like okay how do you do a timer with this programming language and i found it literally for like 10 minute video he explained everything it was so easy so simple just follow the steps style with the way you want with all the colors like html css and whatever you use and you're done so i will say yes youtube has a lot of videos so except for just watching videos for entertainment you might also learn something from there last but not least breaks you do need a break while you're studying so here is this popular method which every time you study for 25 minutes, you take a 5 minute break and like that it goes on for the amount of time which you're studying and actually it's effective and if you're not very motivated to study like me, you can use this study while for example, okay, if you study 25 minutes, you can have 5 minutes on your phone or you can have 5 minutes TV, you can eat something, you can just go to the balcony or something like just give yourself a little rewards for every single thing that you've done because this is like how some people work like they need a little push up for the work that they did, even if they worked very small amount of time or they didn't do that much. But some people are used to working, some people are not. But no matter if you're studying, if you're going to work, you do need a break. Because after all, your brain needs it. Also, your body, not only your brain. But it's good because actually you can rest, stop thinking and just focus yourself on something else before you go back to work or to study. So breaks are really important. Of course, don't make the break more than the time you have studied. For example, study five minutes, have a break 25. No, it should be the opposite if you want to have an effective study lessons. But yes, you just do need breaks if you want to study successfully. These are all the tips that I usually follow and that I can give to you. Of course, if you have more tips or something to add to what I already said, please comment down below. I would love to hear it from you and what are your 
study habits. Personally, I should create effective ones and to kind of get rid of my old cut. Just my phone takes a lot of time, to be honest. Even though I might use YouTube to watch educational videos, yeah, more I'm just like listening, but kind of not understanding like everything. It's just that I'm not paying attention that carefully, which is my mistake but i'm working on being a better person and actually have better study habits but this will be the end of the video hope you enjoyed please like it share it with friends and subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell so you'll be notified whenever i post new videos and i'm gonna see you next time bye